I wanted to make a little video and share some language learning tips that have helped me along the way. I naturally excel in math, getting A's in high school while sleeping in class and getting hundreds on a lot of my upper math exams in college. However, I'm not natural in the humanities, especially when it comes to learning vocabulary. I've always struggled to remember new words. The only class I ever failed was a semester of English in high school because I couldn't remember the required vocabulary for the weekly vocabulary tests. And the second lowest grade I remember getting was a D in German in high school. I'm not a natural language learner. I experienced some French living in Belgium as a child, then later in life through phrase books. I studied a year of German in high school. My family heritage is German, so I wanted this to work, but my high school experience was horrendous and I almost failed. I took a semester of Latin in high school. I don't remember anything, but the experience was positive and I found that I could enjoy language study. My first year in college, I took Intro to Linguistics as an elective. This is where I fell in love with language. I've always been partial to mathematics and the sciences, and studying language as a science had a great appeal for me. While in this class, I studied modern Hebrew informally with my linguistics professor and some Jewish kids. It was absolutely amazing. Later, I did a year of Biblical Hebrew in college. I took three years of Bible Greek in college. Then after college, I began to study modern Greek through language exchanges online and textbooks. I've spent 10 years studying Russian now, so I'll talk more about this later. I've had some very brief encounters with various other languages. I went on a spree where I did beginner Pimsleur CDs in many languages, Chinese, Japanese, Polish, German, French, and probably others that I've forgotten by now. This was sort of a palate cleanser and gave me fresh insights for studying Russian. I had an anthropology course in college that required me to learn a little Hmong with a native speaker on campus. While living in Budapest for two months, I paid a native speaker to meet me in cafes and teach me basic phrases that I use to order food in restaurants. In the early days of studying Russian, I learned words by learning the English equivalent or by learning to match the words with pictures. I think this is okay as a beginner, but when you're able, you should try to move away from word equivalency translating. Lately, I have been studying primarily through reading, Anki, some speaking practice exercises, and watching YouTube or a movie in Russian. For the reading, I have a number of books on my Kindle, graded readers, novels for native speakers, and scientific books for native speakers. I understand just about everything in the graded readers, roughly 50% of the novels, and maybe 10% of the scientific literature. My method is just to bounce my reading back and forth. I don't do it in a controlled way. I just pay attention to how well I'm able to focus at the moment. If I find that I'm getting nothing out of my reading, I drop it down a level. If I've read the graded reader for a while, then I step it up a level. My ability to comprehend or focus isn't static. A key caveat about Anki. I have used Anki at various times throughout my language studies, and I find that the system works best for me when I break the rules with it. I have used it for memorizing word equivalencies, but I don't recommend this because you actually want to forget these word equivalencies as soon as you can. When I say word equivalencies, I'm talking about the word-for-word -word translations you will find in most bilingual dictionaries. I used Anki for visual flashcards based on the method described in the book Fluent Forever. I found this to be extremely helpful, but I also found that making the cards was too time consuming, so eventually I gave up. I stopped using Anki for years. 
Then I had to memorize lots of technical facts in my native language to pass a networking exam. I used Anki for this, and the cards that naturally flowed from my training material made the resource very helpful for me. So what do I do now with Anki? I have a few different types of cards, but just to give one example, I find a sentence or maybe a few sentences in a book or online article that has either vocabulary or a grammatical structure that I want to know. I blank out the word or words and leave them as the answer on the other side. Sometimes this is still too vague, so I will give myself context clues written in Russian, but sometimes I use Google Translate to produce these clues. Another thing that helps me with Anki is that I ignore the timeline part of it. I believe the science behind space repetition is good, but the tools do not personalize the experience enough. Reading can serve as a natural form of space repetition. So what do I do with Anki? I set all my cards to come out immediately, and I just work through them as I feel like it. A second important thing is that I use it as a study guide instead of a memorization tool. I update cards or create new ones as I'm going through old ones and find something isn't sticking. So this is where I might go back and add more context clues, usually because a required response is just too vague from the hints given, or because I don't understand the hints given well enough to get the gist of what they mean. The final important methods that I have, that I have help with output because I find that reading and Anki help a ton with input, but not output, at least not for me. I speak with a native tutor at least once a week in Russian, and I speak with myself. I found a video that suggested talking to yourself is a great way to practice speaking. I agree, but I'm not a particularly talkative person in my native language, so I found that I can never think of what to say. This burden is lifted when I watch movies in English, my native language, but describe as much as I can in Russian while watching. Sometimes I describe what I see, summarize what's happening, or translate what is said. Sometimes I describe in first person as if I'm the main character. What happens in my brain is not full on translation. This is important. I simply think and speak in Russian when I can. But I find when my vocabulary falls short, I think in English. So I use this English to create a new Anki card by translating from the English into Russian. And then the new Anki card will be entirely in Russian.